So uh, we have discussed about the introduction part of the historical developments of casework in the West. Uh, now we will uh, look into the actual history of casework in the West, that is in UK and uh, USA. So um, in ancient times, individuals in every society have been helped by others to solve their problems. In the late 19th and early 20th century, it took professional shape. So before, uh, in the ancient times, uh, there was nothing called a social casework, right? So <clears throat> helping each other or helping uh, uh, anyone who is helping the society members uh, or the community members and solve their problems uh, was the generic term for social casework, like helpers. So in the late 19th and 20th century only, uh, social casework took a more professional shape. In the 1869, the origin of charity organization society in London was <coughs> set up. Okay, and the main aim of the society was to find out ways and means of helping the poor and needy, and thus to organize used volunteers called friendly visitors. So friendly visitors were called also known as volunteers who who are uh, uh, whose main aim was to find find out ways and means of helping the poor and the needy. So these friendly visitors, they visited the homes of the poor for the purpose of assessing their need and for rendering material assistance, uh, for giving them guidance and advice. So these friendly visitors were subsequently called <coughs> paid agents. These paid helpers gradually developed systematic procedures in performing their tasks. They collected data, helped them after assessing and also maintained records personal data type of help render. So casework gradually developed into a professional method through <clears throat> the help of charity organization society. In 1877, <clears throat> these organized efforts were taken by the American Charity, so uh, charity Organization Society in the USA, which was very similar to that in London. So the paid agents, uh, they received training in investigation, diagnosis and treatment for which the New York School of Philanthropy was established towards the end of the 19th century. So the casework was, uh, was officially not the word that time. Uh, paid agents, they received training. Those paid agents who were the volunteers or friendly visitors, they received training in investigation, diagnosis and treatment in New York School of Philanthropy. By 1895, uh, a concept called Almoners in USA uh, was established. <clears throat> Sir Charles Locke appointed almoners to help hospitals to serve patients effectively. Almoners were, uh, almoners were similar to friendly visitors in paid agents. So the name only changed. The, the concept was the same, uh, the paid agents or the friendly visitors. Uh, later, uh, this, uh, uh, this concept came from uh, this same uh, almon uh, sorry, uh, friendly visitors with the name of almoners. In 1898, the first school of social work established in New York, <clears throat> which is now known as the Columbia University. And this was in USA. So in 1911, a casework has had actually emerged in USA as an accepted formal technique. And since the early social workers handled cases of families in need, they were called as caseworkers in USA. So the case, the word caseworker originally term uh, uh, came from the USA, right? Uh, caseworker had emerged in USA as an accepted formal technique in 1911. So from 1914 to 1917, the first training program for casework started and uh, based on medical model, uh, summer training, and uh, started by many schools of social work recognized by professions. So uh, in those times, uh, for example, in the New York School of Social Work, uh, which is now Columbia University, uh, there, uh, the first training program uh, of casework started during this time of 1914 and 17 and uh, lots of uh, summer training internships were given to the professionals. In 1917, Mary Richmond wrote her first book called Social Diagnosis, which set forth a methodology of helping clients through systematic ways of assessing their problems and handling them. The book also uh, introduced the principle of individualization and clients' right to self-determination. So Mary Richmond, uh, who, uh, who was also known as the mother of social work, <clears throat> wrote the book Social Diagnosis in 1917, and uh, and there in a in a very uh, 
broad sense, social casework was defined and the ways like how to help the clients and in a systematic way, how to assess the problems, how to diagnose the problems and how to treat them were all, or, or almost written in the, uh, in the book, Social Diagnosis. And it also introduced various principles of casework or social work, which we know today, like individualization, uh, client's right to self-determination, etc. <clears throat> the impact of the World War I uh, in 1914 to 18 was seen basically during this time. And uh, it is the first World War which, uh, which made a wide impact on social casework. And psychiatry in this period became more, uh, much more important, right? Uh, even psychology was coming in in those times, and um, psycho both psychology and psychiatry developed also in those times. So the contribution of Freud, that is Sigmund Freud and his followers, influenced the method employed by the case workers in dealing with individuals. So uh, when the psychological concepts and psychiatric concepts developed, even they they were incorporated in social casework techniques and uh, practices. Um, Child guidance clinic movement uh, and treatment prevention of mental problems and delinquency strengthened the psychological orientation of this approach. So uh, it, it, uh, other uh, like counseling for the adults were there, but also uh, for the children it started and for their treatment, for their prevention of mental problems, you know, problems of delinquency. Uh, delinquency. So even those uh, started, to, uh, take in, started to be taken up by the social case workers. In the 1920s, uh, various definitions of casework under the influence of Freudian theory, uh, for example, internal factors or individual responsible for this for his problems were introduced. And the case workers realized that, uh, that the core responsibility should be given to individuals to make decisions in their life. And professionals also began to move into other fields like prisons, schools, etc. So till then, uh, professionals or case workers did not move into prisons and schools, but after 1920s, it, it started happening there. And, uh, and case workers were also made to realize that their core responsibility should be uh, giving the individuals their own decisions uh, on their lives. Like choosing their own decisions is what case workers do these days, right? So uh, individuals has to make their own decisions by themselves. Case workers are just there to help the client in taking the right decision. In 1930, economic depression was seen and it, was, it affected not only USA, but the whole of India, uh, whole of uh, the West. And, whole, uh, and some parts of e even the East, right? Because in, in India was at the time in the British control, right? So obviously India was also affected by the economic depression. So case workers had to consider the economic factors which were causing distress to the clients and leading to emotional distress and breakdown. Focus shifted from individual to modification and manipulation of the client's environment to enable him to adapt to his situations satisfactorily. So case workers, uh, they had to uh, consider the economic factors also since the economic dep depression took place and uh, which caused serious distress to the clients, serious depression, serious stressful events uh, occurred in those times, leading to uh, clients emotional distress and eventually breakdown. So um, more focus, uh, I mean, not only the individual problems were focused after that, even the modification of the environment, environmental factors also, uh, uh, you know, uh, started coming into focus and uh, and and even uh, those were enabled to the client to make them adapt to the situations. After World War II, that is from 1939 to 1945, with the problems of moral, uh, morale, uh, leadership, propaganda, separation, communication, etc., social workers found social sciences more useful and there were increase in person problems on the part of clients due to financial crisis. So since economic depression and World War II, there were lots of other financial crises came uh, crept up, right? And due to which the morale uh, of the people were down. So uh, so this morale, leadership, propaganda, separation, communication were also uh, taken into consideration when a client was assessed by the case workers. During the 1950s, this was an era of private practice and professional agencies started growing in this field Casework started going into the community. Uh, Richmond, Hamilton, Pearlman were also emphasized on the problems of social functioning. So uh, basically, it, uh, by, by the 1950s, uh, these professional agencies uh, or the professional social case workers, they uh, started to have a private practice <coughs> in the communities, both in UK and USA. Uh, and uh, more, more, more emphasis on social functioning was given to the uh, clients, like how to enable or how to enhance the client's social functioning. In the 1960s, a lot of importance was given to the research and social action. 
creativity versus environment and the case of method adopted uh, very much new techniques and principles so in the 19s from the, from the age of 1960s lot of importance was given to the uh, research and social action social action is uh, both social action and social research are the, are now the uh, secondary methods of social case work and uh, of social work and and both heredity and environment was also taken into uh, practice and new techniques and principles were adopted since then so uh, here uh, so then we come uh, so there is the ex basic exposition of social case uh, case works history in the west <coughs> both uk and usa in the next video we will discuss the conclusion part